Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be showing you what art supplies I use. Now, I'm not going to be showing all the art supplies I own because that would make this video very, very long. And I figured you guys would want to see the art supplies that I use often instead of the art supplies I don't use. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be showing the art supplies that I use very often. So let's get started! So first we're going to start with what papers I use. So first we have the Canson Mixed Media Sketchbook. I use these sketchbooks a lot. I've had them in many different sizes. This one is 9 by 12 inches. I really like this size because it allows me to put a lot of detail into my pictures because it is a large work area. It is 98 pound paper. Now when I say 98 pounds, some people think I mean the paper is really, really heavy. <laughs> But um, 98 pound just basically means how thick the paper is. Um, so 98 pound is a pretty thick paper. It's not super thin, but it's not like super thick like watercolor paper. I really like this paper because it is on the thicker side. It stands up to a lot of different mediums and it handles a lot of erasing, which is a really good thing. <laughs> Next we have this Canson sketchbook. It is a smaller sketchbook that I use for doodling and just simple pictures. It is 5 by 5, 5.5 by 8.5 inches. Um, the paper is thinner in this book. It is 65 pound paper, but I really like this book just for doing some simple doodles or sketching. I have tried using Copic markers on this paper, as you can see. Um, the Copic marker majorly bleeds through the paper since it is really thin paper, but I just take another piece of paper and I put it under the piece that I'm coloring on. That way the marker bleeds onto the scrap piece of paper instead of into my sketchbook. So next up is Canson watercolor paper. I feel like all my paper is by Canson. Um, but this is my really big pad of watercolor paper. It is 11 inches by 15 inches, which is a really large working area. I actually ran out of my smaller pad. I had like a 9 by 8. It was just like a much smaller watercolor pad, and I used all of the paper in that one. Um, so I have been using this lately. I just cut the paper to a smaller size. Um, the watercolor paper is 140 pounds, so it is pretty thick. Um, this is just the watercolor paper I use and what I have. I've never used any other brands, so I don't know if this brand is like amazing or anything, but I enjoy using it. Next up we have Expressive Blending Card. It is specifically selected for use with Copic markers. Um, I kind of just got this paper because I heard it worked well with Copic markers. I haven't used any other marker paper, but I do really like this one. It works really well with the Copic markers. The ink is able to spread really easily, and it also doesn't dry like super duper fast. Like, if I use my mixed media paper, the ink just like soaks right into the paper and it's harder to blend the markers out, but with this, the Copics kind of stay on the surface of the paper for a while. That way, it is easier to blend the markers. And lastly, we have these itty bitty little canvases. Um, I actually saw these at first at my cousin's birthday party. Um, there was this little activity where you could paint on the little canvases and I thought they were so adorable. So I got some for myself. They are by US Art Supply Liberty. I believe they're for like acrylic paint or maybe like gouache or something. I've been using watercolor on them um, and it works pretty well and I enjoy it. They're such cute tiny little canvases. I've been doing like little simple drawings on them and they're a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, so next I'll show you what I use for sketching in my sketchbooks. Um, for doing my rough sketch, I usually use um, these Crayola erasable color pencils. Um, they erase pretty well depending on the color. Some colors erase better than others. I have these in a variety of colors. Um, I really like using these for sketching just because it, um, when I use pencil over the colored sketch, it's easier to clean it up than doing pencil on pencil because then everything kind of just becomes a blur of gray, but this helps me to find my rough sketch and then my cleaned up sketch. So I really like using these erasable colored pencils. 
So next what I use to clean up my rough sketch, I often use mechanical pencils. I prefer mechanical pencils over um, normal pencils for sketching because I don't have to keep sharpening the pencil. So yeah, it's less work. <laughs> Um, it doesn't really matter what mechanical pencils I use. I have this Bic one and then this Caduzels one. I really like the Caduzel, Caduzels. I, I don't know how to say that word. But I like those ones a lot. Um, I really like how they feel. And I just prefer those ones for some reason. Um, but it doesn't really matter what mechanical pencils I use because I just kind of grab them randomly. <laughs> And if I'm doing a picture all in pencil, I really like these Dermot Graphic pencils. The name's actually coming off of this one since I've used it so much. <laughs> um, but I really like these Dermot Graphic pencils. They come in a variety of lead um, hardness and softness. Um, I got a set for Christmas one year, so I have a lot of these pencils and I really like them. The graphite in them is really nice and I enjoy using them. Next what I use for erasing, I have a few different erasers that I use. First I have this kneaded eraser. I really like using kneaded erasers when I want to just slightly fade a sketch or I don't want to totally get rid of the sketch. I just want to make it lighter. So um, the kneaded erasers are kind of like a putty. They're very soft. Well I wouldn't say they're very soft but they're moldable and they're kind of squishy. So you can kind of make whatever shape you want with them. They're kind of sticky, so when you press them against the paper, it kind of picks up the lead. So what I do is I do kind of a lot of tapping motions, and it makes my sketch lighter without totally getting rid of it. And then next I have just a normal eraser. I don't know what brand it is. It's just an average, everyday eraser. <laughs> so lastly, my favorite eraser of all time, it is like the best $8 I have ever spent in my life, is the Ohuhu Electric Eraser. Um, now if you don't know what electric eraser is, it's basically this little machine that has a tiny eraser at the end and when you press the button, it makes the eraser spin. And then you kind of just touch it on the paper and it kind of works like rubbing a eraser back and forth, but you don't have to rub the eraser back and forth. You can just like make it spin and then erase in a very specific area. I love this for erasing tiny details or just erasing in small spots. This is like my all time favorite eraser and I absolutely love it. So if you're going to get an eraser, I recommend this one because it is amazing. <laughs> Now this next thing isn't really an art supplies, but I really like using this thing. It has made sharpening pencils so much easier. Um, so I have this little container. This was a yogurt container that had a lid on it. Um, I also used like a baby food container at one time, but that broke. Um, so I've been using this, but basically I keep my sharpeners in this. And I also use it to hold all of my pencil shavings. So when I'm sitting on the couch and I am sketching in my sketchbook and I need to sharpen a pencil, I am lazy and I don't want to walk all the way to the garbage can to sharpen my pencil. So I came up with this idea. I just grab this and then I sharpen my pencil over it to capture all of the pencil shavings. And then I put the lid back on so the pencil shavings don't get everywhere. And I absolutely love this thing because it makes it so I don't have to get off the couch to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> Next up we have some rulers that I use when I'm working on pictures or sketching. Um, first I have this Westcott ruler. I got this ruler because it was like 98 cents or something. It was really cheap and it was on Amazon. So I bought it. It's a really nice ruler. I like how it's clear so that I can see the picture underneath. It's always really hard to use um, rulers that aren't clear because it's sometimes hard to tell like Oh, is this the middle? Because I can't see under the ruler. <laughs> and lastly, for the rulers, we have this Koala Ring Ruler. I really, really like this ruler for drawing circles. It's basically an adjustable ruler and it's in a circle shape. And you just like snap it together and then slide the ruler and it can make a smaller circle or a bigger circle. I really like this for drawing circles for like the head or if I just need to draw a really large circle for like the background. But I really really like this ruler. Um, so I recommend it if you want to draw a lot of circles. <laughs> 
So next up, we'll go over what I use for inking my sketches. Um, first, I have this Prismacolor Fine Line Marker. I really like these for inking my doodles or sketches, and I really like how they work. I have them in a variety of sizes and colors. Um, the sizes I use most are 0 .005, 0 .01, um, 0.03, and 0.05. I often use these Pigma Micron pens. Um, I have them in a variety of sizes also. I use both the Prismacolor one and the Micron one pretty often. I use the Micron one if I want to make sure the inking will be waterproof or also be good for Copic markers. Now for some reason I feel like the Prismacolor one kind of does work with um, my Copic markers but for some reason it'll just randomly bleed like really randomly and I don't know why. Like, it'll be working, and then in one spot, it'll just kind of bleed into the ink, and I'm like, it's almost like if I go over the ink a lot, it'll bleed into the color, so I have to kind of be careful and try not to go over the line art. So I don't really know if I recommend the Prismacolor ones with Copic markers, but the Pigma Micron ones work great with Copic markers. I've never had any issues with the Pigma Micron ones um, bleeding into Copic markers or my watercolor. So if I'm just inking a sketch or doodle, I use my Prismacolor ones. And then if I'm inking a picture for Copic markers or watercolor, I use my Pigma Micron um, pens. I do have the Prismacolor ones in a variety of colors. I have like red, purple, green, blue, orange. Um, but the colors I use the most are brown and sepia. I like using these colors when I want my line art to look really soft. Um, so yeah, those are the colors I most often use. Next I have this Uniball Signal pen. Uh, this pen is kind of like a whiteout pen. It has a really thick white ink and I often use it for adding little details or little highlights or fixing mistakes. So I really like using this pen and it works well. I've never used any other brands but I do really enjoy using this one. Next we have what color pencils I often use. First I have these Studler 48 pack of color pencils. I got these color pencils from Walmart and I kind of just bought them because they looked nice and they were a really good price um, for how many colors you got. And I really really like these for just coloring simple doodles or just doing a simple coloring a simple sketch in my sketchbook. I really like using these. I would say they're a little better than Crayola. They're not like super duper soft with the lead, but they are a nice softness and I enjoy using them. Next up we have my fancy colored pencils, which are the Prismacolor Premier um, color pencils. This is the 132 pack. I got these as a Christmas present from my mom and dad. I really like using these. I like using these on more finished pieces or a picture that I want to have very soft coloring or I want to blend a lot of different colors. The colors blend very nicely with Prismacolor pencils because the lead is so soft. It allows them to mix together very nicely. So I like using these on more finished pieces. Uh, next up for what watercolors I use, I use Gold Class Mission watercolors. I got these watercolors because I got a sample with my watercolor palette that I bought. I'll be showing that in just a second. But I got a sample with my watercolor palette and I really liked the sample I got so I asked for some more um, colors for Christmas. This is the 24 pack. It has a lot of different colors. And I really enjoy these watercolors. They're very vibrant and the tubes that are in this are very, very tiny. Like they're pretty small tubes. And that kind of scared me at first, but you do not have to use very much um, watercolor to get a lot of color in your paint. They're pretty pigmented and the colors are very bright. So I really recommend these. They are a little bit on the more expensive side, but they're not like super duper expensive like some watercolors. Next we have my watercolor palette. I do not know the brand of it, but I will put the name of it in the video. I really, really like this watercolor palette. It closes shut, so my paints stay nice and clean when I'm not using them. It has 25 slots to put the colors, which worked really well because I got a set of 24. 
Um, the last slot I put my white gouache in the last slot. Um, it has a removable tray which is really cool. I sometimes use that if I'm recording a video and I, I can get kind of cramped when I'm recording videos so I have to kind of set things up kind of weirdly. So I like how it has the removable tray. I really like this watercolor palette. It is my favorite palette that I've had and I enjoy using it. Next up we have these Pentel brushes. I really like these brushes. You can put water inside of the brush. I usually just kind of use these as normal brushes. I usually just kind of dip them in water. I do um, squeeze the um, brush and make water come out when I'm cleaning it because then I don't get my water all dirty. I have them in three different sizes, a small, medium, and large one. If I'm working on a very tiny piece, I use the small one, and if I'm working on a bigger piece, I use the really big one, or if I'm covering a large area. For the most part, I use these like normal brushes. I just really like the tips on these brushes. I like how they come to a fine point, because it makes painting finer details really easy, and I also really like them for painting hair, but I absolutely love these brushes. I really enjoy using them, and I do like how you can fill them with water, because sometimes I'm painting and I'm like, oh, I need more water, and I can just kind of squeeze the brush, and I instantly have more water on my paper. <laughs> So next up we have these set of brushes. I got these as a Christmas present from my mom and dad. Now when I say I get stuff as Christmas presents, these are not all the same Christmas. I got this as a Christmas present this last Christmas, but some of the stuff I get is like a Christmas like two or three years ago. So these are not all the same Christmas when I'm saying I got these as a Christmas present. <laughs> Just want to clarify that. These brushes are really nice. They're a lot nicer than my Walmart brushes that I had. Um, my Walmart brushes, they were cheaper and they would constantly shed the bristles of the brush into my painting which was really annoying because then I was trying to get these little bristles off of my painting when I was painting. Um, but these don't shed on me very much. There might have been one case where a hair came off of it but from what I can remember when I use them they don't shed very much compared to my other brushes my other brushes were like a cat or something <laughs> so last but not least we have my Copic markers Copic markers are markers that are alcohol based instead of water based so because they are alcohol based they don't eat away at the paper like water based ones do and they also um, blend together much better than water-based ones. So an example of water-based um, markers are like Crayola or um, there are other water-based brands. Um, but Copic markers are really expensive. Um, they are not very cheap. I do buy them in sets to make it cheaper. So like a chow marker is usually like five or six dollars each. But when I buy them in a set, it's only like $3 per marker. So I save quite a bit of money by buying my markers in sets. So the Copic markers have a chisel tip and a brush tip. I mostly use the brush tip. I rarely use the chisel tip. The brush tip is the nicest tip to me and I love the brush tip on these. They are really nice. So for the sets, I have the 72A set. Then I have the 36C set and the 36D set. I believe the 36C set and the 36D set make up the 72B set. So I pretty much have the 72A set and the 72B set. Um, I do have my colors kind of arranged by color family. Uh, so these are not what the sets look like when you get them. I have them all organized um, by different color types. But I do really enjoy my Copic markers. They work really nicely for coloring. So that is all of the art supplies that I use when I am creating my pictures. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!